one hand, this car cost its company millions, if not billions, of dollars. On the other hand, it's one of the greatest cars this side of 2000. The Lexus. The Fa. LFA had a very complex and difficult gestation. So in order to understand why, we're going to look at the Lexus brand as a whole and how its philosophy functioned. It all started when EG Toyota saw the rise of Honda's new Acura division and Nissan's Infiniti luxury division. They decided, well, if they're going to make high-end luxury versions of their own cars, so will Toyota. So, E.G. Toyota challenged his company to build the world's best car, regardless of cost or time or anything. Just build the best. Which means they need their own premium brand, Lexus. Six years, 60 designers, 1,400 engineers, 2,300 technicians, and $1 billion later, the Lexus LS400 launched to incredibly high praise. BMW and Mercedes sales dropped by up to 29%. It was a great car. And it really set the precedent for what Lexus's design philosophy would be. And that is what would ultimately give us the LFA. You see, Lexus wanted to show off their performance capabilities. Now, the first car that was launched was the ISF Sports Sedan. And it was good, sort of M3 rivaling. But it wasn't the first F car planned. No, no, no. That was Project TXS, which was first conceived in 2000, seven years before the ISF, and the first prototype was finished in 2003. By October of 2004, the TXS was seen testing carbon ceramic brakes and active aerodynamics at the Nürburgring. And finally, the first public prototype was shown at the Detroit Auto Show in January of 2005. This was going to be Lexus's Halo car, the car that made everybody say, hey, shut up! We matter. We can do sports cars, too. And it got people's attention. They were very interested in their front-engine sports car. And then their engineers looked at it and said, Wait, hang on a minute. Let's use this carbon fiber instead of aluminum. So they scrapped the entire project and started from the ground up. Including building a brand new carbon fiber weave from scratch. So it took another three years for a new concept to be revealed, and it did also correlate to a competition version that began track testing at the Nürburgring VL and Endurance Series. And the next year, Akio Toyota confirmed the new LFA would go into production. And it would use components from Toyota's Formula One team, about the only good thing that actually came out of that team. Now, being this car was in development for 10 years when orders were finally placed in October of 2009, it was very expensive. Restarting the project from scratch right as they finish it is not going to help the bottom line. And even at $375,000 MSRP, Lexus lost money on every single car they sold, just like the 959 from Porsche. But it almost didn't matter because it was a bombshell. It had a naturally aspirated 4.8 liter V10 making 553 horsepower and 354 torque. It was a masterpiece of forged aluminum pistons, titanium conrods, titanium valves, a dry sump lubrication that allowed continuous oil flow regardless of cornering speeds, and 10 individual throttle bodies. All of that meant 
meant that this symphony of an engine could rev from idle to its 9,000 RPM redline in 0.6 seconds. It was one of the fastest revving engines ever made. And Lexus actually had to use a digital tachometer since the analog one couldn't keep up. It wouldn't be accurate. And at the same time, this incredible engine used the same size, the same dimensions, as their V8 and was as light as their V6. That is some engineering I can't even conceive of. And then, just for good measure, the engine was mounted low down ahead of the driver, but behind the rear axle, giving it a lower center of gravity and better weight distribution. And that is the key thing, weight. For supercars, certainly modern supercars, this is very, very light. Almost everything is carbon fiber from the chassis to the included suitcases. You actually got suitcases with this thing. It's very weird, but there you go. Then, that active rear wing they were testing at the Nürburgring did actually make it to the production car, it wasn't completely scrapped. And that has a gurney flap on top of it to increase downforce without creating drag. But this might be a massive V10 Formula 1 style car, it's comfortable, it's got good suspension, it's got a 12-speaker sound system, and a, yes, you were hearing this right, a mouse for its computer system. It actually came with a mouse. There you go. Meanwhile, its specs were not exactly Formula 1-esque. They're not terrible by any stretch of the imagination, they're faster than most people ever go in their lifetime, but for the money, it's a little bit mediocre. 0 to 63.6 seconds, quarter mile, 11.6, top speed of 202. Not generally criticized, but when the Nissan GTR comes out the exact same year, which costs, you know, a quarter of the price, and is probably faster, it is a little bit hard to grasp though. But once you stop reading the brochure, and actually get in the car, all of that money makes perfect sense. The suspension was impeccable, as with the gearbox and the brakes, they were all world class. On the top of your test track, its wet lap was not only faster than the previous fastest lap set by the Gallardo in the wet, it was three seconds clear of the all-wheel drive Lambo. And German magazine Otto Zitung recorded the LFA being 1.7 seconds per lap faster than the SLS AMG. And Edmonds recorded one of his highest ever slalom speeds at 75.2 miles an hour. And then we have the Nubug Ring. For the last 10 years, this thing has been testing at the ring, so it makes sense. It did a 7 minute 38 second lap, 2 seconds faster than a 911 GT3, and 5 seconds faster than a Nissan GTR. But Lexus knew they could do better. So. In 2011, they released a track-focused version called, you guessed it, the Nürburgring package, which had 10 more horsepower, recalibrated gear shifts, and a static rear wing with a front splitter and stiffer racing suspension. That meant it was 24 seconds faster than the normal version around the ring. Was it a lap record? No. But it was pretty damn close to one, and they didn't make many at all, so it was very rare. Which is a neat segue into the LFA as a whole, because in the supercar market, it is generally regarded as a failure. It was supposed to be Lexus's halo car, but nobody really knows about it. Certainly not the general public. Only 500 were made, and 64 end packages were added after that, but they didn't sell out. Even though only 564 ever made, there is still, as of December 2020, one unsold, in the packaging, like 5 miles on the odometer, LFA, for sale from Lexus. That's crazy. A high-end supercar with an incredible V10 and a knack for the corners didn't even sell out when they made less than 600 of them. And there's a few reasons for that. Well, at least in the U.S. You couldn't 
actually buy an LFA. Rather, to prevent resale, Lexus made you lease it for two years. Sort of defeats the purpose of having a high-end supercar. And then there was the development time. One that made it way too expensive for even the average supercar enthusiast to justify its expense. And two, it took so long that the innovative technology of 2004 wasn't so innovative in 2010 and its tech was more standard than originally expected. And it also didn't really work as a trickle-down system like a Halo car is supposed to function as because generally speaking a Halo car gradually over the years trickles down some of the technology into their into sedans or the lower tier sports cars but the LFA apart from some carbon fiber tech didn't really do that and if I'm honest Lexus themselves can't escape from their own success no matter what Lexus does, they will always be compared to the LFA, and nothing has really been able to eclipse it. The LC500 is pretty good, but even at their unveil at the Detroit Auto Show, they compared it themselves to the LFA. They just can't escape from the shadow of such a magnificent vehicle. Almost like as Jeremy Clarkson once said, it was so good, not even Lexus themselves could build it again. But look what we got out of it. One of the greatest cars ever made.